Well, welcome everyone to our very first exciting devotion, which is actually part of our small church gatherings and uh, lots of our people are gathering in homes today to enjoy a small church and a meal or some morning tea together. If you're not able to do that, can I encourage you just to pause this and to read. Uh, we're up to Ephesians chapter 2 in our study. Uh, take, take a few moments, read chapter 2 and then come back to uh, the, the devotion because we're wanting to give you the opportunity to think through the things that Paul's been writing to the Ephesians. Uh, and if you haven't joined a small church group yet, it's not too late. You can contact uh, us at the office and we'll pop you into a group because there's some really wonderful things that God wants to do as we join as church together. So uh, welcome. It's great to have you. And for those of you who are gathering at homes, uh, can I just say thank you for stepping out and being part of our small church uh, term because God's got some great things for us today and into the future. Well, hello church. It's interesting, isn't it? You can tell a lot about a person by what their home is like. Uh, where you're sitting at the moment, you might like to look around. Where I'm sitting at the moment, there's some beautiful things and uh, you can tell about uh, some things about a person by the sort of home they have, uh, the way they keep it, the way they decorate it, what's important to them. And I think it's really interesting that one of the things Paul writes in his letter to the Christians or to the Jesus followers at Ephesus is that we all, we all together, are the home of the Holy Spirit. Jesus lives in us like a home uh, through his Holy Spirit. And there's some things he wrote to the Ephesians in uh, chapter 2 of, of um, Ephesians that we're just going to look at because uh, in that passage, he talks about some particular things that are the characteristics of the home that he wants us to be like. Uh, not all of us have homes that are exactly like we want, and I suspect that Jesus doesn't have a home that's exactly like he wants. Um, so our invitation is to become more and more uh, the, the sort of place that Jesus wants to dwell in by his Holy Spirit. So I'm going to read to you a few verses from Ephesians chapter 2. If you have your Bibles, that would be great uh, to join in. This is from verse 14. And Paul's talking about Jesus and he says, Jesus himself is our peace. He's made the two groups one. Paul's talking there about the, the group of Gentiles and the group of uh, Jews. Those who were Jews and those who weren't Jews used to have a lot of uh, conflict and arguments. But Jesus came and he made the two groups one. He's destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. So these weren't two friendly groups, they were two hostile groups. Jesus came and preached peace to you who were far away, the non-Jews, and peace to you who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you're no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling or a home in which God lives by his spirit. So as I read that passage, I, I hear some incredible things that Jesus has done. He's removed this barrier that was between uh, the, the Jewish people and the non-Jews and he's brought them together in this description of one new humanity. 
And as we look at that, there's, um, there's four little pieces of this home that uh, Paul draws attention to and I thought it might be good for us to, to quickly have a look at. I wonder if you can see the four building uh, things that go into this home. Take a moment and have a look and see if you can see, uh, just like a, a home, uh, if you're getting one built or if something's being built in your street, uh, it's got some parts of it and there's some parts that uh, Jesus is building in his home as well. So take a moment and have a look and see if you can see them. The first thing you might notice is that there is a cornerstone. And Paul says that this cornerstone is Jesus. One of the things that's true about Jesus' followers is that we don't make up um, how we want to follow Jesus. Jesus has laid down a way. He says that he's the way, the truth and the life. And he invites us to follow him. You know, there's lots of people who would like to be followers of Jesus, except they don't want to have to do what Jesus says. But actually, that's not a follower of Jesus. And the truth is that Jesus, uh, lining our lives up with his truth and his word is actually what causes us uh, to be part of his church. So the first invitation and the first question to ask ourselves is, have I allowed my life to be lined up with the truth of Jesus, with who he is, with his word, uh, with how he's invited me to live, because that's the first thing that needs to be in place. <clears throat> uh, when a builder is building uh, a, a building, the cornerstone is like the piece where they put the string along, the, it's like the plumb line, and the string goes out from both sides of that cornerstone and keeps the building straight. And unless our lives are lined up with the truth of Jesus, we end up building lives that are not going to be uh, straight or aligned with his truth. So that's the first thing that we notice in the building that God's building for his house. It's lined up with Jesus and with his truth. I wonder what else you can see in this building. Okay, you might look in verse 20 and see that it's got a foundation. It's got a foundation of apostles and prophets. What does that mean? Well, I think Paul was uh, encouraging the believers that there were people in their lives, key people in their lives that they needed to have in order to be built strongly as Jesus followers. Paul was one of those people. There were also other apostles. And, and in uh, Ephesians 4, we're told that God has given the gifts or Christ has given these gifts to the church uh, so that the church can come to maturity. I wonder who are the people in your life that you allow to speak into your life, like fathers and mothers of the faith. Not independent, not just doing your own thing, but actually allowing people to correct, to grow, to shape the way your life is. Do you know, in all the years that I've been a follower of Jesus, the people who I've seen grow the most consistently into maturity are people who've allowed their lives to be built on the foundation of apostles and prophets, who've allowed mothers and fathers in the faith to speak into them, to bring encouragement, to bring correction, to bring truth. And they've built a trusting relationship with mothers and fathers in the faith. Can I encourage us to, to think about who are the people in our lives, people of maturity and truth, people of gifting, who've, who we've invited to speak into our lives? Okay, third thing you might notice is that um, this building is being joined together. Peter describes this building with, with some language that says it's like living stones. Um, that's all of us being built in right there next to each other in this building where, where God wants to live, in this home that he wants to have. Wow. 
I ma imagine what would happen if there was only a stone every second uh, place, or if there was no mortar in between the, the different stones, or all the stones were sharp and didn't fit in with each other. You wouldn't actually have a very good building. Well, you and I are invited to work with each other, to forgive each other, to remove those dividing walls of hostility so we actually allow the Holy Spirit to build us together. That's hard. I don't know about you, but there's people uh, in my life that I think, wow, it's hard for me to be built together with that person. Maybe they're very different from me. Maybe they think differently. Maybe they have a different set of values, but they're actually my brothers and sisters in Christ. And so the invitation is, Will I allow Jesus to remove that dividing wall of hostility? For the Jews and the Gentiles, it was the law. And Jesus came and fulfilled the law and took the law out of the way because the law was always going to be that stumbling block that caused them to clash with each other. But for us, it's probably not the law. It might be differences. It might be a different understanding. It might be a different culture. It might be uh, old and young. It might be male and female. But God's inviting us to let the fact that we're all in Christ be the thing that cements us together, the living stones being built together. Wow, is there someone that God's inviting you to let him remove a dividing wall of hostility off your heart. Allow the Holy Spirit to just show us if there's anybody that he's wanting to have us more connected with. And lastly, we see that this building is the building in which God lives by his spirit. It's the home he wants to come. He wants to be at home here. I love that when you're in your own home, you, you make yourself at home. You want to be there. You're comfortable. Uh, it's familiar. It's a joyful place. It's a peaceful place. And this is the invitation that God's giving us as his people. Will we be the place that he wants to be at home in? Will we be somewhere where he feels welcome, invited, because of how we've lined our lives up with the truth of Jesus, because of how we've allowed uh, mature mothers and fathers in the faith to speak into us and help us grow, and because we've allowed the Holy Spirit to remove dividing walls of hostility. You and I are invited to be the home of the Holy Spirit. I'm just going to invite us to ask Holy Spirit to show us what that invitation really means as we together uh, grow in understanding who we are, who we all are together as his building, as his home. Let's pray. What an incredible thing, Jesus, that you want to come and live in us. You live in us as your temple, uh, as individuals, but even more so, you want to come and make your home in the beautiful place that we build for you when we love each other, when we work on unity, when we put aside our differences and when we line our lives up with the truth of Jesus. So we're inviting you to remove hostility, independence, judgment, offence, all the things that divide us from each other. And we're inviting you, Holy Spirit, to come and live afresh in this home this building that is your rightful dwelling. Please help us. Amen.